They're always after your lucky charms. <laughs> Please, no more Xbox. Oh, the cards and letters keep coming. Oh. People keep asking us hey, to look. stop. When that stops, I'll stop. We've insulted a number of countries, We're not several states. Them. I'm dying to go to Ireland. A number of ways of life. I'm not, ins I'm not insulting anyone. I'm just having a little fun. Please. So what do we got today? Irish accent, Irish whiskey. Well, okay. I should have known. Now, bad Irish accent, but hopefully really good whiskey. So the worse the accent, the better the whiskey? I hope so. This should be I, really good whiskey. I hope yeah. so. This, this comes from Bar und Ischka Irish whiskey from Red Cross in County Wicklow, Ireland. Apparently this is on the eastern coast East of coast. Ireland. Okay. Uh, they were kind enough to ship us four little sample bottles. Sadly, one of them spilled a little bit, but I think we were able to preserve most of it. Excellent. Uh, so there are, there's four. Plan is to do two today? Yeah, we'll do two today. Two today? Yeah. And we'll see how it goes. Barun Ishka is a small craft whiskey company hailing from County Wicklow in Ireland. Launched just over two years ago, their fine craft whiskeys are now available in 14 countries and in over 20 U.S. states. They have two on the market right now. Barun Ishka 1803, which is a 10-year-old single malt, and Barun Ishka Wicklow Rare, a signature blend of 4-year-old grain and 10-year-old single malt. Uh, they launched two more this year. Uh, let me see what it's called. Baron Ishka 16-year-old single malt and Baron Ishka Wicklow Hills Blend, bringing the product portfolio to four. So that's what we got. I'd say we do two. And I put the two that I think we should try on the ends. On the outskirts? On the outskirts. The now, they, the company's been around two years? Two years. So to have a 10-year-old whiskey, and they're see. probably not making it themselves? Probably not. So it'll be interesting to see where they've sourced it from. It would be. The question is, I don't know if they, they don't tell us that. I don't think it's anywhere on the bottle. No, I just, it'd be interesting to find out. I yeah. Well, that's a fact-finding mission. And if any of you fine listeners have any idea where this stuff is from, by all means, leave yeah, a comment below and let us know. Shoot us a note. We'd love to hear about it. So anyhow, let's uh, we'll start off with this one here. This is the Wicklow Rare Small Batch Blended. Uh, Please, sir. You do the pouring. I'll do the reading so we don't waste too much time and leave a whole mess on the cutting room floor. Been doing a lot of that lately. Uh, let's see. Blend 80% grain, 20% 10 year old malt. Matured in first filled bourbon barrels for four years. Finished in Oloroso cast for six months. 43% ABV. Uh, our signature blend with its perfect combination of grain and malt to a 43% is complex, pure, and uplifting. We could use some uplifting. That's true. This reflects the native Wicklow spirit shaped over the past 500 years through our rich and complex heritage, landscape, community, and culture. So, anyhow, sounds delightful. It, it does, and the color is very, looks very, very nice. It's very golden. You know, it's positively it's shimmery. Shimmery? Shimmery? If it were green, I'd say it was like the emerald Cheers. isle, shimmering, but it's not. Is, is it, um, I don't know. What color do you think we got here? This is like a honey. A honey? I'm going to leave her alone. It's not It's not dark enough to be in. No, it's not. It's not. This is very vapory. Very, very vapory. For 46%, you wouldn't yeah, expect like, I'm, that I'm kind getting, of vapor? That's like the first thing I'm getting. I'm getting a lot of like, you know, a lot of the fumes coming up. But behind that, behind the fumes, you know, because this has been bottled up for a little bit. It's just escaping. It's opening. It's blossoming. It's blooming. So you're getting menthol? Is that what you're saying? A little bit. At, to the start. At the start. But after that, it's a little sweet. There's a little. There's a lot of vanilla. I think there's a lot of vanilla on this. You know, I'm, I'm not getting the, the typical grassy, heathery notes. No. No, not at all. And I wonder if that has to do more with the blend. It, it could be that. Yes. Also, remember, they said they did say it was a bourbon cask, yeah. followed by an Oloroso sherry cask. So there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on there. Well, it's also a lot of grain. Right. Right, because it's eighty percent to to just all barley, just all malt. Yeah. Right, because this was what was it? Eighty percent, eighty percent grain, twenty percent malt. Yeah, but on the nose, definitely a lot of sweetness here. There's, there's a good bit of sugar, a little bit of like powdered sugar kind of going on, going back to that cream donut thing. I think I agree. You know, like, like a custard. It smells like a very sweet. Custard. And, I, and I dove in, and the flavor is very sweet. It's very nice. You get a little bit of the alcohol vapors up front, and then a good bit of sweetness, and then maybe a little pepper. The finish is a little abrupt. It's uh, it, there's not a lot of depth to it. 
It's got a little viscosity. Yeah. It's not. It's not very. It's not thin. Yeah. You know, it's not oily either, but yeah. it's got a little like a medium body. But I think the finish is a little bit short, and probably that has something to do with it being more grain than it is malt. You certainly do get a nice rounded flavor, probably because it's ex bourbon, and then six months in the sherry cast didn't hurt. No, not at all. And that I brings th- out a little bit of the fruitiness. I think we found that when you change the woods, you almost rapidly age what's going on so maybe mm. the flavor it's not as old a whiskey as maybe you'd want mm. but because of what they did with the wood combinations it tastes like it's a little older than maybe it is yeah it's, it's 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 got a little spice there's a little bit of cinnamony not i wouldn't say peppery you go cinnamon i go cinnamon more like a you know, like a like a cinnamon sugar you know not super hot but there's a little bit of heat there um so like you go from your donut to a crawler is that where you're going? There you go. Or, or how about an apple fritter? A fritter. Get an a fritter because you're getting a little of the, the fruit. I'm getting a little fruit. I'm getting a little, like, little apple-y, a little, a, little, <laughs> a little cinnamon, a little dried fruit. Oh, I want an apple pie, damn it. I got some hot dogs in the fridge. Oh, speaking of pies, you know what I saw the other day at the deli? You remember the Tasty Cake Pies? Mm-hmm. Krispy Kreme does an apple pie, apparently. Does an apple pie. Yeah. Pre-packaged. Interesting. Headed out. So maybe... The sugar on the outside of like a Krispy Kreme donut. donut, and then you get that little apple-y, apple cinnamon, cinnamon thing cinnamon on the inside. Okay. I haven't tried the Krispy Kreme apple donut, apple, um, apple pie. pie, but I'm thinking maybe that's what we got going on here. Maybe. And, and I think you may have gone off on yet another tangent. Ah, another <laughs> tangent. It happens. It's, it's okay. It's all right. It's that's what whiskey does. It leads us down a path, and the path has many, 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 many trails. We're never supposed to get off the path. Ah. You never find your way back. If we wanted to stay on the path, we would be drinking whiskey. Let's let's face the facts here. Fair enough. <laughs> How about that? So I, I don't think to me this is a typical Irish whiskey. Maybe it's a more of a a, a Burmany, more of a U.S. whiskey than it is an Irish whiskey because I'm mm. not getting that heather, the grassy notes. No, no, and, no, no, and that's not to say it's not good. It's just I'm not. It's, it's just, just not what I'm getting. It's, it's just different. It, it's, it's almost like remember like when we first had when Teelings first came out, mm-hmm. and that had the rum barrel, yeah. the rum cast had finish, or whatever it was. Finish, yeah. It had a little bit more yeah. going on. Yeah. And some of the other like you know not the traditional Jamesons we've tried, or the Middletons, you know, but it's not quite that that feisty red breast whiskey either though. Yeah. This leans more towards the Teelings, I think. I think it's more of a gateway, and it's it's. Uh, Definitely a very short finish. Mm-hmm. I can see that. But easy, anyway. easy sipping, easy drinking. No, it is. It is. As you can see, I once again finished. Well, I'm gonna knock this one back. You don't need now a pickleback. <laughs> no, no, there's no pickleback. <laughs> so yeah, I thought this was pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Um, not, I wouldn't say it was great, but it was, it was nice. If you were giving it a number, uh, 86, 86. 85, 86. I'd, I'd say 80, 45. Yeah, yeah I, I go around Pretty that. close in agreement. I go around that area. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's nothing harsh. There's nothing mm-hmm. like, there's no off flavors or mm-hmm. any kind of harshness whatsoever. So it's just a nice, easy, easy whiskey. So I'm curious to try the 16 year old. So we're going to pause for a second, switch up with our glasses, have a little water, and then we're going to go to the next round. Round two is going to be the 1803 single malt. From Barun Ishka, the 16-year-old Irish whiskey. And while I'm reading, or starting to read, and, you know, <clears throat> mercilessly torturing our listeners, watchers, viewers, uh, you pour. So, limited edition 16-year-old single malt matured in first fill Kentucky bourbon barrels. Only 1,803 bottles produced, hence the number, I guess, and all numbered by hand. 46% ABV, matured for 16 years. This special whiskey displays all the hallmark, hallmarks of extended wood aging. The cereal character of the malted barley has melded with the flavors and aromas of the white American oak <clears throat> and shows the sweet vanilla coated toasted coconut and caramelized notes of the charred wood. So, sounds delightful. It does. But there's only one way to find out. Oh, well, yeah, I think you short poured yourself there, buddy. I'm okay with a short pour. You trying to get I'm me drunk? Good. I'm good. Salute. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to County Wicklow. Is it possible to get a smell of cheese? Well, you know, the uh, the, the fam did have cheese tortellini earlier this evening. 
with tomato sauce. So I don't know. Maybe that's what you're saying. <laughs> were, were they eating it out of these glasses? No, they weren't. Yeah, are you kidding <laughs> me? Come on. And I think we're okay. Come on. These go in the special cabinet. No one's allowed to touch these glasses. You know why? This is this is this is research equipment. I get these from Fisher Scientific. I, I, I'm. I'm <laughs> It's special chemical glass. This is a little darker than the other one, I think. Just a hair darker. A little bit darker. This is getting closer to amber, a little but not darker. quite. And while at the same 46%, this actually smells a little hotter. Does it? I don't think so. I didn't get any vapors on this one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, but I'm really sniffing to get some vapors here. I'm practically like snorting whiskey here at this point. See, they kind of led the witness because now I'm getting all that like vanilla and caramel and maybe a touch of coconut. I'm getting more baking notes than anything. Mm. Vanilla, a little bit of cinnamon, maybe no clove though. I'm not getting any clove. Getting a little bit of soap. Soap, like what kind of soap? Like a lavender soap, like a yeah. Yardley's yeah. English lavender. But again, none of the none of the heather, none of the grasses, none of the, mm. what you kind of expect from an Irish. This time around, not so much baked apple. Maybe like a maybe a, like a cherry pie, with that like you know that real buttery crust. It's almost a little buttery, like it just came out of the oven. How hungry are you? <laughs> I'm always <laughs> hungry. I'm always hungry. All these reviews seem to coincide with large dessert items. Why not? That's well, I dove in, and uh, I think you're correct. This isn't doesn't seem to be as, as hot or as vapory no. in terms of alcohol as the first one. I'm, and uh, I'm getting a little less sweetness and maybe a little bit more spice. But again, the, the finish, I think, is fairly short. Peach pie. Sorry, Peach. not cherries. Peach. 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 Peach pie. Peach. Peach. Peach Melba. Melba toast? Melba. <laughs> Definitely a buttery crust though. Peaches, herb. Peaches and herb. <laughs> you have some serious problems. <laughs> serious I'm just, problems. I'm just, I'm trying to connect how, all the synapses. How much drinking do you do before the show? See, here's the thing. I don't drink enough. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. Oh, well, that's it. You know, I like the mouthfeel on this. It's like a little thick. A little bit thicker? It's a little thicker. It's not oily per se. But there's a little bit more to it. It almost like, you know, yeah, no, it is thicker. Because it, it felt like it kind of glided slowly over the tongue. The other one kind of like was more a little wispy. You've, this one's got a little more density to it's it. It's enrobed. Yeah, it is. Enveloped. It's all in the front third. It's all yeah. like right there. It's not particularly hot, though. No, I don't not, think it's hot. It doesn't taste like a lot of alcohol. It's not particularly sweet, either. No. No. Where it, it, the nose was a lot of baking notes, a lot of... No, this As is you little, said, peach pie. Yeah. You don't really get that in the uh, in the taste. This is a little dry. Yeah. It's a little bit dry. But this is nice. I think I, I, I like this a little bit. And, I, and I think the finish is equally short yeah. as the first one. Yeah, it, it doesn't have a, low, a whole lot of depth. But what's there is nice. Yeah, it's not it, it's, it's not a particularly long. But what's there, I, I really enjoy yeah, it. It's good. It's got a little bit of, you know, the, the, the baking spice. Not particularly hot, but but it's dry. It's it's very, very dry on the end, which I wasn't expecting at all. You? I, same thing. I just, you know, the short finish I kind of expected because we had the first one. But the, the it's almost as if they had it in wine barrels mm -hmm. as opposed to the way they barreled it. Yeah, or it, well, it wine across, or like one of the sherries. Or, yeah, it comes across as a little drying. Yeah, or like a, what, a sherry barrel. Yeah. Yeah, and then too much time in a sherry barrel. Now I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get like the dried fruit, like the dark fruits, with maybe some brown sugar. So yeah, that's pretty good. I think I, I like that one better than this one. So you giving it a score? Yeah, I, I go eight, 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 five eighty six. The first one. Yeah, I would go. I go like eighty nine, maybe. No, really? I'd probably go eighty six, eighty seven. Because it's not really your typical Irish. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm is looking, it an expectations thing? Yeah, I think that's what it is. I was expecting it to be a little bit mm -hmm. more Irish. Than it is whiskey. Yeah. It's a you know it's a good solid whiskey, but it's not really an Irish whiskey to me. And again, maybe that's my exposure. I haven't been exposed to enough Irish whiskey. Who you know that what I've been exposed to is oh you just stay in your targeted wheelhouse. to a certain market. Yeah, yeah they yeah. all sort of taste the same. And I got you. If you went around, you'd find a, a wide variety. This almost kind of like maybe but this was a lot of bourbon barrel aging, correct? Yeah. But you could almost get like a bourbon-y yeah. vibe to it. Yeah, you that's know? what I'm getting more. Almost like, you know how like Woodford's really light? Like the standard issue Woodford's really light? I almost get that. So mm -hmm. I'm curious actually where they get their bourbon barrels from. That'd be another thing. So if anybody knows, any of you fine people watching this video, please let us know because we'd love to find out. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. Yeah. I'd like to explore it a little more. You know, maybe we'll come back and do the other two. We have 
two bottles to explore. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. So anyway, thank you to the fine folks at Bar und Ischka Distillery in County Wicklow, Ireland, for sending us these lovely samples. And they came right from Ireland, by the way. I got the packing right stuff Right through the door. Yeah, it was pretty cool. They put it in a little Tupperware container. They, oh. they wrapped it up really good. Very nice. Sadly, one of them got a little loose in, in shipping. But overall, they didn't break. So that's the important yeah. thing. So anyhow, cheers, folks. Cheers.